Here we have the Seagate SSD. If you guys have ever bought a hard drive, you'll know that Seagate are one of those choices for those big chunky drives. And in fact, I've got four of them in my NAS at the moment, and they have come a long way over the last decade to the point where I think their drives are absolutely fine nowadays, and I do recommend them without hesitation. But how about their SSDs? Them getting into the SSD market, I think, has been long overdue. Their competitor Western Digital, for example, has gotten in a couple of years ago, and with that, they've been bringing some pretty solid competition to the market. Seagate, however, especially with this SSD, is seeking to break into the NAS market Though as with any Tech Yes City review, I'm not gonna beat you guys around the bush. We've got a 240 gigabyte version of this stuff coming in 80 USD, or in Australia, 143 Aussie dollars. It scales all the way to a 3.84 terabyte drive, which is coming in at 880 USD, or in Australia, 1,479. And honestly, if you're an Aussie and you're in the market for one of these, then you'd be much better off just buying from Newegg directly. However, as you can see with that pricing structure, these drives are coming in significantly more expensive than otherwise cheap SSDs that are out there in the market. For instance, you can pick up 240 gigabyte SSDs nowadays for around 30 USD, making this drive nearly three times more expensive than the cheapest options out there. Though after testing this thing pretty extensively here in the studio, this is where the price difference of these drives does start to make sense. And that is the actual consistency of the read and writes themselves. I haven't seen a line this smooth in any test that I've ever done on any SSD ever. It's pretty much just flat across the read and writes, which means that not only the read and write algorithms that Seagate are using in these drives is phenomenal, but also the controller and all the other hardware in between is also top notch. I believe they're using the latest firmware revision on an S10 Fison controller, as well as Toshiba 64 layer NAND flash banks for the actual storage itself. They've also got that attached to a Nanya DDR3 burst bank. And in this case, since it is a 1.94 terabyte model, you do get two of those situated on the PCB itself. Speeds and inputs and outputs per second are pretty good. However, it is limited by SATA 3. And when comparing it against other drives around here, it's pretty much one of the norm in the pack. Though the temperatures and the build construction of this SSD are pretty good, and upon taking it apart, I was very surprised. If you guys follow us on Instagram, then I did post a picture of this and what was inside. And it's literally like they've gone away with thermal pads and they've just used a whole tube of thermal paste inside this SSD. I was surprised because I've never seen this before in any SSD or in any storage device that I've tested before. However, when I did the temperature test, they did turn out very good for this drive, securing a maximum temperature of 38 degrees on the surface and 40 degrees in software in a 25 degree ambient controlled environment. The drive itself weighs in at 76 grams, is housed in a metal chassis, which also functions to cool down the SSD as well as give it a nice aesthetic. Though the last things to go through with this drive now is what makes that price differential, I guess, worth it. And that would be the mean time before failure on this drive is rated at 2 million hours. So to put that in perspective, they're basically saying the half-life of these drives is even more than that of the average human lifespan, which is 27,375 days or 657,000 hours. So quite impressive though, unfortunately in a review like this, I cannot put that to the test. Reasons being pretty obvious. The endurance rating, otherwise rated in terabytes written, is actually quite impressive as you go up the scale. This one here, the 1.92 terabyte drive, is coming in with 3,500 terabytes written endurance rating, and then the top of the line is coming in with 7,000. All the Ironwolf 110 NAS drives also come in with a five-year warranty and a two-year data recovery warranty is included. However, one thing I noticed is that they tout software that will be included with this drive, but it's currently not available yet. So I couldn't test that for you guys and take it for a whirl. Though they do advertise this drive as being specifically for NAS solutions, whether it be in a tiered cache structure and that you use this as a burst drive for your slower hard drives, or you can buy the bigger models and just have an all SSD solution. Benefits of that, of course, less heat in the NAS, as well as having faster transfers across the drives, whatever RAID configuration you wish to do. The last feature, however, in this lineup to talk about is their Durarite, or in America, I believe you guys would call it Durarite, based off 
durable, and in Australia we say durable. This feature here relates to the SSDs having extra capacitors on board in case of a power surge or power loss, your data won't risk being corrupted because it will save the last state before it switches off. And to sum things up for you guys, with the IronWolf 110 SSD, it's a nice solution that definitely comes in with the right initiative for a NAS-based solution. Read and writes are extremely consistent, as I said before, the best I've ever seen in any storage solution coming through here. But of course, the price is a little bit expensive, but for that price, you are definitely getting a premium SSD that I would say is worthy of carrying that NAS title in the moniker of the actual branding itself. Anyways, hope you enjoyed today's review of the Iron Wolf 110 SSD. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, let us know in the comment section below what you think of Seagate getting into SSDs. Do you think they're going to have a tough time with the amount of saturation that we're seeing in this market? Or do you think they will pull ahead as a champion in this market? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, or check us out on Instagram Tech SC if you want that inside scoop before it even hits YouTube's loop. And with all that aside, I'll catch you guys in the next tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.